It's a rainy day. That always adds stress to the dogs. It can be relaxing for us, but for them, it's just added noise. And, huh. Hi, why do your eyes look so sad? What's wrong with your paw? You want to sit down with you? Yeah, let's go. Let's sit with this one. Let's see what's going on here. Hi, can I come in? Hi. Can I just set this down right here? Can I set this down? Okay, it's okay. I'm just gonna move this so we don't we don't splish splash take a bath. I move the water bowl out of there. I put it right back in when I leave, but I move the water bowl out sometimes because I've had dogs that, that panic and then just flip that water bowl up and then it really scares them. Let's see if we can get a more coverage area. I try not to use their towel or blanket if I feel like that's the only kind of safe zone they feel that they have because it really is the only you know they don't have much in the shelter when they come in here and the only thing that they can kind of claim as their own is that is their little bed I don't really have any fear of this one reacting you know due to their fear state boy or girl it's an orange collar sometimes the shelter does a uh, pink collar for girls and blue collar for boys. But sometimes they just use whatever they have. And um, and this was an orange collar, so I don't know. And I did not look at the intake form. Are you, Alexis, are you out there? Yeah. It does, is this a what boy or a girl? This one is a girl. How old is she? She is around eight. Oh. I'm sorry, sweetie. You know, Malamute's at eight years old are absolutely senior dogs. And you can just tell in their movements, they're a little slower. And even if you feed them right, you know, it's the age where they can start to get a little silver on their face. And there's, a, there's a dog behind her in another kennel. And those steel panels uh, are very thin. So she thought someone was trying to sniff her butt. It scared her. Oh, hi, you're pretty. Look how pretty she is when she sits like that. I see you. I see you. I know. I'm sorry, sweetie. With her, it's going to be showing her some comfort. Like you can tell she can use just, even if it's just a moment of time where she lets her guard down a little bit and sh is shown a little kindness. At eight years old, all of a sudden being in a shelter, having no clue what's going on, that's hard. I'm going to start with treats. It's always the best entry point, in my opinion, in this, in this situation. I'm not going to make any eye contact. She, she is not ready for that. That'll just put an undue amount of stress on her. Oh, yes, we have the treat take. Yes. I'm uh, tampering my excitement level so that I don't scare her. But inside, on the inside, I'm like... Little like nine-year-old Rocky just jumping up and down going, yes. Because <laughs> I know that if I can get her to take a treat right out of the gate, we can get her to, to experience some comfort. We'll see that, that transformation. I think. You never know. You never know. Sometimes they just aren't ready. Just like us, right? Just like us. But with that, I'm going to try another treat here. And I'm going to sit down. Move slowly. It's okay. Hi. I still always position myself a little bit in front because the minute I get on the same equal level or behind, it, it, that little amount shifts the dynamic. Look away. I, I bet she'll take a treat from me at this point. Let's see. I'm going to look away and do this. And I, I try to do the first one. I try to do a bigger treat because those few extra centimeters really matter. Oh, yeah. Let's... I love, I love feeling those little teeths right in the front. She's pretty gentle at taking treats, too. I've never had a Malamute, but I think in general, Malamutes are just good at that. They're so smart. They're so smart. Sometimes too smart for their own good. Okay, let's see if she'll take it out of my hand now. She still wants it like that. Okay, okay, that's okay. 
she's showing me what she wants. Like, that's the thing in these situations is, I know we think of dogs being our best friends, so we think, well, they're just like us. But it's those little nuances. Like she was showing me with her nose that she wasn't comfortable taking that treat out of my hand, and she was bumping me, letting me know that she wanted me to hand her the treat in a certain way. Watch, we'll, we'll do it again. See how she's showing me? She's like, that's, that's my comfort level. And, that, and that's great. When a dog is smart enough, I mean, all dogs are pretty intelligent. More, I think more intelligent than we give them credit for. But when they're smart enough like that, it, it's really important to listen because they'll tell you what, what they need. But I still want her to take a treat from my hand. Let's go a little lower. No, she, still, she does not want that. Okay, that's okay. Sometimes people ask me why I hand treats that way. In a normal dog home environment, I don't do that. But in a shelter environment, in this specific environment, it's, it's space. Like every, every little bit of space matters. It's okay. It's okay. The dog behind us stared her. She just kind of scared. Oh, look at her tail. It's actually good because I can see her. So she's matted really bad. Um, I mean, it's not the worst I've seen, but it's not. It's painful, certainly. We're gonna, I want to find out her story because I think that'll tell us a lot as to why, you know, outside of it just being a, a shelter and she, her not knowing what's going on, but I think she's probably got a story. But yeah, her, her matting back there, I have to be careful with my movements. Her matting uh, in her hind area right there is really bad. And she's got these marks on her feet. That I don't know if I, well, are they marks? Or are they, they might just be allergies or licking. But it's, it's interesting because it's just on the top of the paw. And I haven't really seen that much. I mean, the fur is definitely worn off there. Like a lot of times the paw lifting will be on the actual, you know, kind of toes. Uh, Alexis, are you still out there? Yeah, I'm here. What, what is her story? So apparently she uh, is an owner known. She does have a collar. Oh, can I see it? Never mind. Actually, the collar that I see up above her kennel is not hers. It's actually a sibling that she came in with. Is it the the white uh, Malamute right next door? Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, because I was like, man, there are a lot of Malamutes in here, but they're siblings. Oh, my goodness. Pretty sibling, too, but probably looks like a senior also, huh? Yeah, this one is also older. Is that a boy or a girl? Um, that one is a, uh, boy. So brother, so she got a brother. Is, is that her brother crying or one of the other dogs? No, it's one of the other dogs. This one is kind of acts the same as her. So owner known, was it because it's on her, well, she didn't come in with a collar. The other one had a collar. Did she have a microchip? No. So the way they know it's an owner known is because the dogs were confiscated from an owner due to an eviction. Oh, that's hard. That's hard on both sides. Dogs don't always come to the shelter because they've been abused or, you know, sometimes it's situational. And, it, and you could see how someone could easily fall on hard times, especially right now with how expensive things are getting. And they might get evicted by their landlord and they have nowhere for their dogs to go. The landlord calls animal control and everyone decides that the best thing right now because the dogs have nowhere to go is to the shelter because the human also has nowhere to go um the great thing about the shelter is they do a 10-day hold to give that owner time you know and it's hard to know right the the other situation could have been the person was evicted because the situation was really bad and animal control felt that the animals shouldn't be there or in a new home uh, we just we just don't know the situation. Know that the shelter is really good about extending whatever help and support they can to these individuals, and they will do that. And if that individual feels that they are not suited to take care of their dogs any longer, the good news is we can help them find a family so that they are happy and healthy and loved. And she has definitely been through it, and most likely her brother has been through it. Um, just, just in the you know the last couple of days of having to go through this this whole system, and certainly they felt the stress from their family member losing their home. Hey, Kel. Yeah. Can you call Sundays and see if they would be willing to feed two dogs 
give like feed them for the rest of the year. If we can get them reunited with their family, if we can work on a grooming plan and a care plan, um, most likely they're it's financial stress right now. So if we could get them food, like it would just help out so much. And I bet Sundays would love to help support in that way. Okay, I'll give them a call. Sundays for dogs is what we're feeding to our dog, Kobe. It's an amazing food, and especially for a senior dog, because uh, it's human quality ingredients, it's air dried, and it may really help extend a senior dog's life. Especially a dog that's been through a lot of stress like this, having good, healthy nutrition will go a long way. And Sundays is the sponsor of this video, and they've been helping so many dogs with us. I just think this would be a really neat opportunity if we can reunite the dogs with their family. And here's the thing, if they can't be reunited with their family too, I'm willing to extend that offer to anyone who can adopt these pups to help offset costs and get them the nutrition that they need to just make sure that her and her brother are healthy and happy. It's hard, these situations are hard, and this happens often, unfortunately. Oh, hi, and she's just, she's just so sad, like the way she turns around, Let's turn the focus to her. Remember, the reason we're here right now is to show her some comfort and some love. Let's try some positive affirmations. Do we have a name? We don't know the name. I'm sure she has one, we, her brother has one. It but just didn't transfer? Know. Yeah, didn't transfer. Sometimes this stuff happens so fast. Um, I've seen situation, guys, where, where someone gets evicted and they just feel defeated. They just leave, right? And, and they leave the dogs and then you don't have the information. But let, let's shift to her. Let's, let's get back to her. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Hey, let's give you a treat. I'm sorry that you've been through this. It's not your fault. And it's gonna be okay from here. I know this place is unknown, but you're safe. We're gonna make sure you're okay. Yeah, hi. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. Yeah. Have you not heard that for a little while? You're a good girl. Do you want a treat? Do you want a treat? Huh? Do you want a treat? Hi. Do you want a treat? That's a good girl. You're a good girl. Yeah, this is a good girl. Hi. Can I show you some love? Let's keep giving you treats. Hi, sweetie pie. Hi. Good girl. Yeah. That's a good girl. Hi. Hi. You're a good girl. This is a good girl. You want a treat? You want a treat? Here. That's a good girl. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good girl. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. I was a good girl. You are a good girl, and this is not your fault, and I love you. The care that has gone into her is not sufficient. So if the owner is able to take her back, the team will definitely talk to them about uh, grooming or can we help with funds for grooming or like what can we do to help with maintenance because the condition that she's in right now is not okay. It's painful and uh, and she's, you know, it's tough. Now her paws, something's going on with her paws. That, that doesn't necessarily mean because she hasn't been cared for. Like that could be an allergy. That could be a nervous tick she's been going through in the last couple of days just licking nonstop. A vet could be a better person to kind of diagnose what's going on but she definitely could use some care above and beyond what she's been getting so she's a malamute malamutes look a lot like huskies until you get them next to huskies then they do not look like huskies <laughs> um and and malamutes as puppies they're very pronounced and you're like whoa look at that fluffy teddy bear as they get older that wears off just a little bit and so they start, in my opinion, they start to little, look a little more like Huskies or easy, easier, it's easier to confuse them. But any Malamute owner would absolutely disagree with me and they would say, how would you confuse those dogs? <laughs> but you know, I, I had a boxer, right? And people were like, oh, is your pit bull gonna be friendly? You know, it's like, what are you talking about? The difference of a Malamute versus a Husky is they're like, like a Husky is like an endurance runner. Where a Malamute's like a bodybuilder sprinter. Like they're, they're really strong and they, you know, they don't have the same endurance as a Husky, but they can pull much heavier loads. They're very, very strong. And that strength, it's in her. Like that's, that's the neat thing about a dog like her. She's eight years old, but the strength to carry on, I think that's a song, by the way, is in her. Like you can see it and she's sad right now and she just wants to melt and disappear but it's there, I know it's there, inside her, like under this mess of a coat. Hi. 
And her coat, like if you feel it too, it's just really dirty and oily just because it's been so long since she's been groomed. Malamutes also, they take a tremendous amount of trust before they're ready. And like, you know, I don't think she's gonna be doing any cuddling with me, but I, the good thing is she's up and around. You can see it now, she's like up at the front of the kennel. So here you go, look at that, look at that face. Look at that pretty girl, seeing your face. And she wouldn't even take treats out of my hand before, even though I've kept forgetting. And now she is. Malamutes are, are one of the more amazing breed of dogs. They have a lot of energy. And when I say a lot of energy, it's a lot of energy. The great thing about adopting an older dog is some of that energy is compressed. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, yeah, but I want a puppy because I want to train them and I want to be with them my whole life. And I couldn't stand it if they were only around for a little while. Well, an eight-year-old dog, there's still lots of dog left. And they're going to be at like their prime of just being a, a really great, calm, loving, kind dog, good family dog, I would imagine. Her brother's with her. I know I'm going to get comments about, well, they need to be adopted together. And that's unlikely. I would love for them to be adopted together. If you can come adopt them together, come and do that. The tough part is at this point, it's like, well, we've got to get them adopted if their um, family is unable to come get them or decides that's not the best path forward or the shelter decides that they're not being cared for enough. If that happens, we've got to find them homes. And the good thing is, you know, they're separated right now. So while they, I'm sure, love each other, they're, you know, bonded pair dogs are typically dogs that just can't exist. Their heart literally breaks if they're pulled apart. And that doesn't seem to be the case here. So her and her brother may end up being available for adoption. I'll put the information for both of them on her adoption form. You just go to uh, rockykanaka.com and uh, you'll find it there. Or I'll put the link in the description below. And I hope, I hope that they are never available for adoption and that their family is able to come and get them. But the reality of the situation is they may end up available for adoption and they're gonna need you. And we don't know names, and so we need to come up with some names. I, I would like to name her Misty. And this one can be Ash. I like, I like Misty and Ash. I think that's great. Pokemon. Yeah, oh, Pokemon. <laughs> I didn't even pick that up. Okay, let's try, let's try her name and see what she thinks. Hi, Misty. Hi, Misty. Hi, can we call you Misty? Misty, you see her hiding back there? Oh, she's going around? Hi, hi Misty. You know another thing we should do right now is we should, hey, uh, Alexis. Yes. How long have they been in here? They've only been in here so far for about two days. But I feel like yesterday I saw them together, right? Can we, oh, you think we can open up the center divider? You wanna just check with the team real quick? As long as we get the approval, let's open up this center divider and put her and her brother together. I think that'd be really fun. And the reason they're separated is often because, you know, siblings are going to be siblings, right? And they may not have been okay with having their food together. It's like in your house, you don't feed, you know, you may not feed your dogs both in the same little quarters. Like with us, Kobe, especially our blind guy, he's not food aggressive or anything, but he'll definitely get a little anxious and apprehensive if another dog's too close to him while he's eating. So we put dogs at other ends of the house or other ends of the room. Okay, Sunday said they are in for these two dogs. The... Sundays, thank you for being a sponsor. Like I, what I love about that is that's two dogs. Guys, that's a lot of food. That's really expensive. But uh, Sundays, like not only do they make great food, this is how you know, like we want to support the companies that are true dog lovers that are really supporting dogs. And Sundays is that, like the fact they're going to feed two dogs that really need it um, for the next year. Awesome, awesome. If you want to go do what I'm doing, you should for sure. Like the, the neat thing about all of this is, you know, can you walk into any shelter and sit with a dog? No, I can't even do that. Like I, I'd get turned away sometimes. It, it takes time being a volunteer and volunteering. But the thing is, is you can go volunteer and you can work with dogs like I do. The, you just gotta start. Like when people say, I wanna win the lottery and then I wanna go start a dog rescue. I get that, like I get the saying, I, get, I know what you mean. But the thing is, is you don't have to wait to win the lottery. Like going and working with dogs is winning the lottery. And also if, if you can't do that right now, the schedule doesn't allow, you got you know too busy, kiddos, whatever it may be, then you can become a member. And 
it's really neat the community we're building. Like having you guys as a part of sitting with dogs is phenomenal. And being a part of the community called With Dogs, like you being a member of that, it goes so far because that contribution helps us continue to help dogs. And you get to be in that community um, with other dog lovers. Also, you're the first to know when things come up like adoptions and, um, and updates, good or bad uh, sometimes. And everyone, you'll all get the updates, but being a member, uh, you get them first. And I pre-release videos too, which is kind of fun, like the first 24 hours sometimes. You can subscribe, you can follow. The biggest thing you can do is share because you never know when your share will make the difference. I don't care if you're located in Bolivia and the shelter's all the way here in Wildemar, California, Southern California. You never know when that share is gonna find its way to the forever family. So many people tell me when they adopt, they go, yeah, my, you know, I had a friend share this video and there you were and there was this dog and I just knew right away. Hi, oh, does that feel good? Does that feel good? You're such a pretty girl. Yeah, I bet you are one of the most loving, loyal, kind, caring, great family dogs out there. And even though right now you are caked in just a film of oil, I am so lucky to be petting this. Oh, you bet. You see that release that's happening, you know, like I, when they let me, and I've said this before, I try to rub their head hard enough. So like if you've ever had someone like massage your head, you leave and you can still feel it and that blood is flowing. Cause I feel like that has a good long lasting effect even when I leave the kennel. So I try to do that before I go. And with her, I think this is a good spot. Cause if I pet anywhere else, it could kind of really hurt from all the matting. What a good dog. Okay, let's, uh, let's put her and her brother together. Um, also, if you wanna get a Sitting With Dogs shirt, I will link that down below or my treats, go check that out. But let's, uh, let's reunite them. I think Misty will run over there to her brother or she may be like, oh bro, leave me alone, I'm getting all the good treats. But um, okay, all right, uh, li what do we say? Like lift the, I don't know. Okay, <laughs> do it. Open the door. Open the door, open sesame. There we go. Well, I thought they were going to hug. <laughs> yeah, she's going to come back for treats. Watch. Ash, you don't know the good stuff that's going on over here, bud. Misty, you want a treat? There we go. Do you want to tell your brother about it or you just want to eat all the treats? Look at that. Even with treats, she's sticking close to her brother. That's awesome. I mean, if there's anyone out there that can take two Malamutes, that would be awesome. Um, I know that's hard though. Let's see if we can get Ash a treat. Ash, you want a treat, buddy? I don't want to start any food squabbles. Ash is not interested, huh? Yeah, he's got some matting going on too. Does he want one through the gate or he just lets Misty he's eat them all? Misty's trying to steal it. Misty, you little sister. That's just like sisters, isn't it? Wait, how old do we think he is? Um, around seven. Seven, so probably same. Around the same. Yeah. I bet she's the older sister because she's like. Yeah, she just came and took the treat. Yeah, that that could be another reason they separated them is because she eats his food. You know, she eats her food and she goes over and finish his food. <laughs> I'm gonna give him some space because he seems to be comforted by his sister, but he's he's mad at too. Uh, I will get some video of this. I want to see what what's going on with him. Yeah, he's cut. I think it's just dirt. He's pretty scared too. Hi, Bubba. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. But yeah, he's got some stuff going on too. He's got some matting. Ash, I'm going to try one more time, but I think Sis is going to grab it. They're so sad. They need a family or they need their family back. Okay, guys. I'll keep everyone updated. I'll let members know as soon as I know and everyone else shortly after. So I'll keep you updated. Follow along.